Like you're ready. We you doing? I'm just messing with some stuff. I've been ready. Like, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> yes. You're talking, so I don't know. If, oh, yeah, okay. Here, prepared. let me hit record. This plane's been recording. All right, stop that. You, you, you should go. Are you gonna stop? Are you done? Are you good? Okay. All right. All right. You should go now. Okay. Okay. Oh, so, is that part of your? We can't. Okay. We can't see the popcorn. I just want to see the popcorn. I just wanted. Look. This movie's about black people. So that's that's why I'm here, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is this is a Princess and the Frog review. Um, I had several people when I told them I was going to be having Caitlin um, join us. That's me. This is Caitlin Finley. My name is Stephen Carroll King. They're like, but she's white though. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just playing, but for real though, she's white. So, look, I understand this is the first black princess and that's fantastic. Um, Tiana happens to be my favorite princess. And whenever I tell people that, they're like, is it because she's black, Stephen? I'm just playing though, but for real though. I'm just playing, but seriously. Yeah, it's because she's black. She's the best for quite a few reasons, which I will display. We, we glorify Ariel to the point of putting her on every shirt in every business ever. And every um, hot topic in existence. Yeah, and Tiana is all but forgotten. People are like, oh yeah, there was that princess movie with the black girl. Yeah. I love Ariel. She's so free. I mean, I saw The Princess and the Frog uh, a few times in theaters. The movie barely broke even. And, you know, going back to Frozen, which made over a billion dollars, um, everybody saw it 12 times. And then their friends saw it 12 times. I saw it three times. I saw it once. I'm part of the problem. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it was okay. For all the, the different ways that I think The Princess and the Frog brought beautiful things back to the table, it's very much underappreciated. Because they're black. It's good to have friends. The end, I think, a lot of it is about friendship and uh, how important it is. Not so much necessarily about about the romance, but you know the uh, the things that that's most that are most important to you, and you know all the success, everything in the world means nothing uh, if you have no one to share it with. A lot of Disney movies are all about friendship is great, but this is one of the movies where it was like you really can't get very far without people to help you. Maybe like in all the films. I mean, like if you, if you go back to uh, you go back to Snow White. You know, Snow White was in trouble. Those dwarves were angry. They were riding deer, like ready to you know. We're ready to kill her. Like that rock that rock fell on her, <laughs> but they were gonna beat her. <laughs> Those dwarves, you see their faces? They she were... had a better end than what would have happened did. if the dwarves had caught up. <laughs> yeah, I know. They were gonna skin her alive. It was gonna be violent. You see their look in their eyes. Even Dopey was ready to break some limbs. And in Cinderella, you know, she was in trouble, and it's good to have friends. Uh, the horse, the dog, the mice, they got her out of that room. And that's what's up. But they were all not. I feel like Tiana was way more capable and self-sufficient. Oh yeah, it's, than it's, they it's, were. it's not yeah that that she was like, necessarily helpless at all. She's a person that's um, been on her own and working hard for her whole entire life. She affects those around her in a positive manner. Ray, 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 <laughs> Ray, the first death in a Disney movie since The Lion King. Talking about. <laughs> Touching you right in the in the heart pieces as you weep <laughs> and get stepped that was the on. the worst. The noise it made when we just... <laughs> <sighs> that was horrible. Jeez. <laughs> but he looked, he looked pretty good for someone who just got stepped on. Like, he was... There should have been stuff coming out. <laughs> Some goo. Disney, costing <laughs> your kids therapy. Since... The birth of, uh, of Walt Disney. Fabulous characters. He's a Cajun... He's a Cajun firefly with, like, two teeth. And uh, who's in love with a star? Um, Evangeline. Evangeline. <laughs> it's no, it's the stuff that fairy tales are made of. Um, for a movie that takes place like in uh, a more contemporary kind of real setting, it's got so much more fairy tale in it. Was that alligator? Was he alligator? Or was it a crocodile? Uh. He was. A, he was a gator. I learned from X Men from Gambit. There's always more gators in the bio. He was such a fun character, though. He was just a happy-go-lucky. Oh, here we go. We get back to back to, to Ariel. Ariel wanted to be human, and at the end, she got that. She didn't have to, you know, 
she didn't have to, to love herself or learn to deal with, you know, with who she was. But the gator was better. He did, he, yeah, he did not. He, he came to terms with it. He was cool at the end. Yeah, he wanted to be human and she was like, shut up, you don't know what you need. And at the end, he gets to play his, uh, his music as a gator. <laughs> That's part of the fairy tale again, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, he wants to be someone else so he, so he can play, you know, music with the big boys. And he ends up being able to do that, being a gator. He ends up naming his band after Raymond. Yeah, the Fire Five, Five and Lou. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it was Lou and the Fire Five. Lou and the Fire Five Fives, yes. Prince Naveen, the cool thing about Prince Naveen is... Uh, I don't like Naveen. <laughs> I, like, I like Naveen because, I mean, he's just an irresponsible, uh, rich idiot. I uh, like but, him because uh, he's spoiled and annoying. And yeah, so I'm, irresponsible. I'm saying, I love these guys that just, you know, they just don't care about anybody around them. No, but, but, but you know, but he does, he grows you know, through the film. I like that he's not perfect. There's Prince Charming, who is charming, you know, that's nice. There's uh, Prince Philip, who is, uh, mm. he's, you know, he's nice, and that's nice. Kissing sleeping girls in castles. That's what I do on the weekends. There's Prince Eric, Who's nice, you know, and that's nice. He's got um, a dog. That's he's cool. He's got a dog. You know, it's uh, he's a very uh, he's not you know he's not your average you know prince. He the fact that he's not Prince Charming is what I think makes him appealing. Good character growth on that one. That's true. Yeah, I mean, it's what happens to him. It, you know, uh, detail as well. The fact that they had to spend most of the movie as as frogs. It's like you think you got problems. No, see, I heard a lot of people complain about that. Like, the first Wait. movie with a black princess, and, and she yeah, spends the whole pro, movie as a frog. a frog. That's not fair. See, my, my dude, <laughs> yeah, I, re I read those articles too, and I'm like, then you completely missed the point. People being turned into animals is like a Disney staple. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's it just adds to the struggle. Like, the yeah. struggle is real. Like, this isn't a joke. Like, Tiana already has problems, and then she becomes a frog. You're trapped in a tower, you know, you know, I, I feel for you. You know, you got, you got jazz. You know, your sister won't talk to you. You know, it's tough. I'm a frog. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I got turned into a frog. No, I thought Tiana and Naveen were a good couple though. Because they like balanced each other out. They had what each other needed. Needed them to <laughs> let go a little bit and lighten up. Gee, and... Not a stick in the mud? Um, <laughs> no, but I mean, Na Naveen, you know, from where he is at the beginning, I was just talking to Oa and the Little Mermaid about how, how Ursula doesn't have to lie. Uh, to Ariel, because she's just she's just dumb. That means a different kind of dumb. You know, I love that. Uh, you know, it's the green you need. You, need to, you know, yeah. makes it to be cash, and you will be green. You will be hopping around <laughs> from place to place, because you're gonna be a frog. Um, <laughs> you gotta watch your wording. You gotta be really specific read those when making those wishes. That's right. When you sign your T-Mobile contract, check it out. There's you, you nothing. Did, 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 there's forgot, nothing okay. in the T-Mobile <laughs> contracts. <laughs> Okay, we're getting ready to team over. Okay, those Verizon contracts. I actually can't talk about my job on social media. Not oh. allowed. I have AT and T. Traitor. Villains. Um, one of the low points of this movie. It's it's. Not, Facilier is not a low point of the movie, but for me, I felt bad that there was more of him in there. Um, Doctor Facilier is probably one of my favorite parts. He has my favorite song in the movie. Um, like the villain song is in a very important part. Of the Disney film now. It didn't used to be before they had them, but once Ursula came out with Poor Unfortunate Souls, you had to have. That um, kind of set the game up a little. Yeah, bit. you had to have a jam. Like scars, uh, be prepared. Are you kidding me? Basilier's was awesome, though. <laughs> no, um, Basilier's was amazing. He's also one of the only villains to not have any real ties to the um, to the to the lead character. So he was a different kind of, of villain, a more worldly. Um, you know, overall kind of guy. He but hated rich people. <laughs> he did hate rich. There's a lot of people liked, out there. I like that because the movie was it was very clear between this is the rich side of town, this is the poor side of town. There's a lot of rich shaming in this movie. And I think that's inappropriate. But yeah, he hated people with money, and people with power, um, and he and he uses voodoo. Um, but he can't to, to get use things. it for himself. That, yeah, and that's the that was another interesting thing about him. You know, he's got this power, but he can't make things for himself. Otherwise, maybe he would just make a bunch of money, but he can't. So he has to uh, you know to use others to try to get. Uh, what he wants out of life, and when he sees his spoiled rich kid, he comes up with a doozy of a plan to get himself everything he wants. It's Jeez. also a terrifying musical number. Like I wouldn't show that to a small kid because it's really scary. Uh, is it Lottie? Lottie? Who's her best friend? Lottie is her um. Lottie. Lottie. Lottie is another cool because she is rich and she is she's her best friend. Um, Lottie is probably one of the, the best friends, uh, ever in the history. 
of movies. Like, she's a spoiled brat, and she's not very intelligent. Um, she's really nice. She is, but she, she's there for Tiana whenever she needs her. Even though she's absurdly self-centered and selfish, even though she has she everything. She hires her to cater her party yeah. to help her get earn money for her restaurant. You know, Tiana knocks over all of the uh, all the beignets at the party. Um, Gives her a new dress. Instead of being angry at her, I'm like, what are you doing? I hide you for all this stuff. She's like, oh shoot, you got stuff on you. Let me get you cleaned up and give you a new dress. Like, all she wants is to marry a prince. That's all she wants in life. That is her goal. <laughs> her one goal. And when she finds out that they're in love, She's like, oh, I'll kiss him for you. You, should, you know, why didn't you just ask? You know, it's uh. She just asked me in the beginning of the movie. All of this could have been. Avoided. She waits a few seconds too long. There are more dimensions in the characters here than just the simple. Oh, she's a rich, stuck-up kid. No, she's a rich, stuck-up kid who you know who has a heart, um, and who sees past. You know, like her best friend isn't you know another rich kid. Her best friend is the 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 poor girl whose mom used to make her dresses. Mama Odie. <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to, to fairy godmother characters. You got this old, this blind, uh, it's my favorite. crusty, toothless, old uh, grandma. And she's making gumbo in a bathtub. Making gumbo in a bathtub. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. And she's got this using, great. Using a live animal as a as a cane. Mama Odie is is uh, is fantastic, and she's so blunt, and she uh, you know, she's big until it's the things you want versus what you need. It's another very important thing about this movie. The music in this film. Uh, and that's it's another part of the history here. Um, it, when you really look into American music, uh, you know, period, everything that you love, the way that we sing now, because the way that people sang and did music before Louis Armstrong showed them that you can uh, uh, go about it completely differently, mm -hmm. it was it was a different bag altogether. I only touch on slavery for a second here, you know, but it's you know, it's, it's a terrible thing, but you know, the spirituals and the uh, you know, and kind of gospel music that came from there, which gave birth to the, to the blues and the jazz music. You know, it's something born from the worst tragedy, uh, you know, in American history. Uh, was born something beautiful, which gave light to, essentially, uh, all the music that you love today. And they, that all came from New Orleans. So going back there and getting the music and getting Randy Newman to make all these all these different songs that uh. They had everything in there. There was the gospel music, the, the blues, the jazz, the big band. Yeah, the, Zydeco. The Zydeco. Like yeah, like they touched all. on every and every type of a. Uh, music, you know, from New Orleans. It's really cool. Uh, to have a theme and to go with it, like the Lion King did, you know, the Lion King, uh, they they kept with the the kind of the undertone of the African, like Elton John knew, knew what he was doing yeah. when he wrote that music. It's um, the details that make the No, it's, it's, the it's the sign of a, you know, that they were paying attention. They put a lot of effort into it, and it's kind of crappy that it didn't get. <laughs> it only did okay? Yeah. Now let's talk about Tiana. Um, I identify with Tiana the most because like that's my life. Uh, not just be, both because we, because uh, we're both black and we both, you know, lost our fathers at a young age. That scene at the beginning of the movie where she walks into her, uh, into her room. It's the morning. She's getting off of her late shift. She falls into bed, and then one second later, like her alarm rings, and then she's got to go to her other job. That's my life. You know, she's the working woman. She's a, wo a woman of, of of vision. You know, compared to a lot of the other. Disney princesses who were sitting sitting around waiting for things to happen. Of things happening to them, of people doing things for them, or waiting for that one magical thing yeah, to make to happen. everything better. She's working to make it herself. She's working to make it happen. She wants to buy the, the crappy old building on the you know other side of town. Uh, that looks you know, this building is is shabby, like look her mom is like, oh like god. A dirty she, river. Yeah, when she sees like, it. Yeah, she sees this hunk of uh just blah. It's, it's a derelict yeah. building, yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> she sees this and she can imagine, you know, the Almost There song is really, really cool where, where she's able to, you know, you see what's going on in her mind. Um, she imagines something beautiful and she can build that from trash. When Naveen wakes up, you know, after they've been hiding in the stump, she's already built a raft. Yeah. By the time he wakes up, she built a raft. Cooked breakfast, made a raft, made a plan. Yeah, she makes she makes gumbo out of pumpkins and uh, <coughs> swamp gumbo. Uh, no, she's incredibly resourceful. Um, and self-sufficient, yes. and determined, and, and brave, <laughs> and self-confident. Yeah, all, all, you know, all these traits, these things that we should be, you know, <laughs> yeah. that we should be looking to, you know, we shouldn't want our daughters, you know, and, you know, and sons, and ourselves in general, to, to seek to be. She is short-sighted in the way that she's so determined, you know, when you want some, this so much, you, you know, her friends are asking her to come out and dance, but she's like, no, nah, not even one night, I can't even go out and have fun for one night, you know, she is... She's keeping herself from, she's a bit stiff, which is fine. You don't have to yeah. 
succumb to every weirdo who wants to offer you a flower on a train. Uh, or every guy who comes up playing the ukulele to you. She doesn't fall for the magician immediately. Ariel. <laughs> Ariel. Because Naveen does have some skills. Naveen can totally play the ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> um, he minces. He minces really well. He learns how to mince. She teaches him how to mince. Yeah, you know, so when people, you know, every time they have to crack the joke, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna breathe fire at you just because whenever I say, my favorite princess is Tiana, <laughs> because she's black, <laughs> buddy, guy. To all my friends who I am their one black friend, so they, I guess, you know, they have to get all those jokes out of, the, you know, out of the way. Um, no, Tiana's not my favorite, uh, princess because she's black. Bianca's my favorite princess because she is a self-sufficient, determined person who is not interested in taking the cheap way out. She's my favorite princess because she brings light to those around her. She's my favorite princess because at the end of the movie, she doesn't go off to a castle. She opens a business. Well, I mean, I think she's a very important, relatable character, and I'm... Oh, it's for, for everybody. I'm like, the, like, whitest white to ever <laughs> Caucasian. But she's just a good character regardless of her skin, of the color of her skin. You know, that, the, taking place in the time where it did, that's part of, you know, of her character. You know, like, when the two, you know, realtor guys are d denying her and they make it, they make a, a jab at her, her race, it's... It's very, her race it's, her very class. it's very sugar sugar coated because it's Disney. But like a woman of your background, like we catch as close as we can get to racism in this movie. Yeah, this is still Disney. Um, like not only are you poor, but you're black, so we don't want to sell your this background, to you. All of you tall people. <laughs> uh, she learns the hard way about trying to take the easy way out whenever she, you know, she kisses a frog. Which is she, surprising to me because that's like the one time in the movie that she tried to take the easy way out and, and she it gets, totally blew up in her face. She gets turned to a it's frog. Like the for, one time she tries to just cut some corners, it just backfired. She gets the butt into the stick compared to a lot, a lot of princesses. Like life is hard and you get turned to a frog and you go into the swamp and everything's trying to kill you. She, she learns to open up, you know, through being with these, being with these people, like having uh, spending time with them. That's the cool thing about her is that she, you know, or it's cool to be determined that she learns to not only only love, but you know, but to have friends. You know, these people are willing to fight for her, and when you know does die for her, um, you know, because they they believe in her. Um, you had to bring Raymond up again. I do. You know, Ray dies, and that is. And this is I'm her, never gonna get over that. It's horrific. At the end, when like the cloud parts and the Ray's little star starts shining next next to uh, Evangeline, you get that quivering like, oh Ray. Angelina, and then like the little things almost touch, and you're like, ah! <laughs> I get like bothered by small little like details. Um, the grandma firefly in the musical scene with Raymond and the Meyer, she's she's a grandma firefly, but she has a walker. And yes. later in the movie, she like throws it away and starts like dancing. <laughs> I just didn't know why she needed uh, a walker. And Sometimes then <laughs> in the very very beginning of the movie when Big Daddy, which I don't know why as a child you would call your father Big Daddy. <laughs> Big Daddy. Um, Big Daddy. Yeah. He's like, I'm not buying you any more dresses. And then he pulls a puppy it's, out uh, of somewhere. It's, it's a, we need to know where he was storing that puppy. I want to know. I he, mean, was, he was in that room for a minute yeah. <laughs> before he pulled that puppy and out like, of. He's a big guy, but I don't think he was, had pockets that big. That puppy was stored somewhere where it couldn't make any noise. And they made it like a shadow <laughs> against the wall. So you were watching the shadow, him pull a shadow puppy <laughs> out of nowhere. Puppy? Maybe he was also like a voodoo master. Who wants a puppy? <laughs> I liked how Naveen was the damsel in distress the whole movie. He's the one that gets, you yeah, know, like he, taken in by the villain and you he, know duped. No, yeah, he got them into into the, uh, the princess. into the problems, and she's constantly getting him out of. Uh, I mean, eventually he said, yeah, he starts um, like because he goes back to save uh, her when she gets trapped by like the frog, you know, the, those, Get the, the, those those inbred frog <laughs> two this fingers. This guy, this guy freaks me out. He like didn't bird. understand anything he said. I, mean, I'm trying to, I, I want to know if, if, if he lost those fingers in like a fight or he was just Was born he born with, without them? I want to believe that those were all... Was it like a tragic frog geeking accident? I, I'm pretty sure that those are all a victim of like inbreeding. What happens in the bayou stays in the bayou. Oh god. I said before, uh, without magic, would these people be able to be together? That was my big thing about Little Mermaid and every Disney film that I watch. Without magic, would the two people um, who fall for each other be able to, um, to be together? They become frogs. And at the end, instead of, you know, they're too late to break the curse. And 
another, another thing about Tiana and even Naveen now, like they, they, they learn to make the best out of a terrible situation. Like they're, it keeps getting worse for them. They were going to make it work as frogs at a beautiful frog wedding. Have a beautiful frog family. You have like a wedding like right after your friend dies. Naveen would have That's like band of... practice on the weekends. <laughs> have a bayou restaurant where she makes pumpkin gumbo <laughs> on non-food safe uh, containers <laughs> on open fire. Jeez. How are they cooking in that pumpkin? You don't you don't dine and ditch at uh, at Tiana's place because he's not a vegetarian. They'll, they'll feed you to the gator, like the actual. They have a real gator. In the back, she's making like gumbo out of a. Yeah, this is Lou's gumbo. <laughs> Nobody else eat this gumbo. The way the movie ends is my favorite ending of a Disney film, where she has built, um, she has built her castle, which is a business. She has opened her business. Her husband, the prince, is working for her like an employee. Like he's mincing, he's playing. Um, uh, the fact that he, you know, has grown in that way, um, it's, and they're, they're dancing on the top of her restaurant at the end. Mm -hmm. To me, that was, it's the most fulfilled I've ever felt at the end of a Disney film. Yeah. Um, uh, something was learned. Um, she really did start from the bottom and ended at the top. It's the kind of fairy tale that inspires me to keep pushing forward, no matter how many times, you know, you might get slipped up, no matter how many times you might get turned into a frog, no matter how many times... Uh, you know, your friends might get stepped on and crushed. No matter how many times. She's gonna keep pushing that button. She's gonna send you texts of, of, uh, of Ray. It's the end of an era. It was like a, like a throwback to the Disney movies of our childhood. Of yesteryear. Don't take your Firefly friends to see it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button and you will be notified when I make more stuff to see. Um, check out the rest of our Black Brothers reviews with me and my Brometheus. Um, let us know what movies you would like to see reviewed. Uh, thank you, Caitlin, for taking the time. You are welcome. Thank you for having me. Welcome, my friend. I'm gonna go uh, listen to Fireflies from Owl City. <laughs> Alright. <laughs>